separation anxiety from that convenience could be the one leading the way that you can't even glimpse or perceive the new thing that's about to happen. Anxiety opens on godly thoughts, on godly accusations that leads to false projection on something that's not happening. The Holy Spirit told me to say that, but he didn't tell me that he would have a job for me by the 29. He didn't give me any cushion to hold, to make me be able to say with my full chest that, let, um, thank you so much, I love you, nothing has happened, this is an amazing relationship, I call her my mom, she calls me her daughter, so I'm leaving. Do you know what I'm saying? So there was nothing for me to be able to be like, this. nothing bad had happened at this point, nothing. So that's why when the Holy Spirit said, go tell this person that you're leaving, I'm like, ah, if I tell them I'm leaving, what if I'm not leaving? You know, all those kind of things. And I'm like, but actually the main thing that was sponsoring my, my posture was fear. For you to grab this new thing, you have to leave the old. It's time to shift. Not because what you have with you is bad or where you've been, the job, the relationship, the season, not because it's bad. God is doing a new thing and he's doing something different with you individually. So poverty mindset will tell you like you need to be greedy or you need to like shift to lack. You either move to greed or move to lack. You're just like, you're going to lack, you're going to lack. So the fear of lack will keep you from actually opening your mind to the possibility of stepping to something bigger. Welcome to navigating your will to let go, even with the good and God factor. Thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you so much that this is a fresh word and a fresh revelation from you right now. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you will be the leader, leader of this call in the name of Jesus. I pray that you are poking the right things in the heart of people. Um, and even when it's it's painful or that you will be, you will be the embrace that they get to receive in the name of Jesus. Um, and even when you're, you're stirring up something in our hearts, Lord, that it will be for good and it will be for a good that serves your purpose and not of, not of our flesh. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would love to start with a scenario <laughs> and I'm just probably going to read it out to you um, and hopefully like you hear, you start to make notes, but I'm going to start with a very, very simple scenario. Um, and this scenario, I labeled it as Starbucks hot chocolate. <laughs> um, so I'm, I was traveling, commuting recently and carrying a cup of Starbucks hot chocolate, of which if you know me, I take almost a whole day to finish a drink that I, I buy. So when I go to Starbucks or even at home, really, I take I take time. I sip like like there's like a like I sip as if my throat is like a tiny hole, right? So all day I'm drinking this. So I'm headed to the station, to the train station, um, of which I need to go to a luggage storage where I would have to grab two, three bags before he heading on an interstate train. I hear the phrase, something may be so good, but you can't take it with you on the next journey. On a norm, I would be that person that would try to carry every single thing. Like I would be, when you see me traveling somewhere, I have bags, I have food, I have everything with me. I have a cup of drink, I have everything, right? I'm trying to fit it all in because I don't want to throw it away. I don't want to waste it for so many different reasons, right? So mind you, I'm in the, in the middle of a seven day seven day water and tea only fast so hearing that voice that says something some things may be so good but you can't take it with you on the next journey i know it's not me and i know it's not normal so as such i leaned in because i knew the lord was probably telling me something my flesh would typically not throw anything that i paid for away i would try to hold on to it or at least you know hold it till i finish it because i bought it so i opened my heart and started to see the reason why the Lord, uh, I started to see the reason why it was probably the Lord that was speaking to me at this time. Mind you, this cup is 75% full, so I had barely drank any of the drink, right? I was like, okay, Holy Spirit, you know what? I'm just going to sip it all up. 
just drink it quickly <laughs> because I'm starting to understand, oh, okay, because I have so many bags to carry at the, at the luggage storage. That's true. Okay, let me try to sip it all. I paused and I felt a nudge exposing me to the immediate fear of lack that sponsored that thought. I'm fasting. I might need a drink on the train and I won't be able to get one if I throw it away. So let me drink it all in and stretch the capacity of my stomach because of the fear of lack when I would need it. Then I was like, Holy Spirit, okay, I feel another nudge, nudge. Okay, you're right. You're exposing me to the fear of lack right now. I'm only trying to consume all of this right now because of fear that I would not have money to buy another one or fear that there would not be another place to buy another drink on the train. Then I was like, Holy Spirit, you're right. Then I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. How about I take two sips, like two goodbye sips and then throw the rest away. Next thing, I took the first sip. <laughs> I'm on the subway. So I decided to wait till when I'm ready to throw it away at the next stop to take the last sip and wish it goodbye. Deal. <laughs> then obviously I took a sip out of, well, um, not obviously, unconsciously, I took another sip out of reflex. And as soon as I took the second sip, I was like, oh, this is the second sip now. I caught myself and a voice immediately told me, well, that's it now. You said two sips. So I'm going to honor my word <laughs> and throw and hold on to it until I find a trash can to throw it away. Another voice was like, but this is my drink. I bought it with my money. <laughs> One more sip won't hurt. Plus that was an unconscious sip. And I felt the Holy Spirit start talking to me. Some of, about some of us, the sentimentally, holding on to things, places, people, relationships that we already know we should drop. So if you're in this room right now and you're starting to see the picture that the Lord is painting for you right now, I want you to get out a notebook and just write. Get out a notebook and just write. Write the first thing that comes to your mind. Write the job that comes to your mind. Write the relationship that comes to your mind. Write the things that are coming to your mind as we take this process with the Lord. The Holy Spirit said, huh, this is literally some of us. How we sentimentally hold on to whatever, um, to things and places and people and relationships that we know it's time to drop. As we speak right now, some of us are carrying unnecessary baggage that will make the next journey, assignment, relationship, longer, stressful and challenging. We shouldn't for all kinds of reasons. We know we shouldn't hold on to them for all kinds of reasons that seem valid. But we, 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 we still lean towards the unnecessary baggage that we need for the next journey and the next step. So from the wrestle in my head and to honor the deal that I had made in my free will. Remember the Holy Spirit didn't say I need you to take two sips and drop it. He only pointed me to the fact that you're not going to need this for your next journey. And that's the, 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 the heart and the idea of free will, right? He's like, you're not going to need this for the next journey. You're about to get in the station and run to the luggage station and carry like three bags. You are not going to comfortably thrive in your next season, next assignment, next thing that you're about to do if you hold on to this. He gives me a choice, which is what the Lord does, right? And then I decide as a powerful person that I am, I decide, I'm, I'm like, Okay, Lord, I will take two sips. You know, the first thought, I knew that that was not sponsored by the Lord. Okay, let me greedily, greedily take it all in. And of course, I felt a nudge as a child of God, right? So the idea is not a thought. <laughs> the sin actually is the action, the action thoughts. The thoughts are natural, right? But the sin itself is the action, when you put those thoughts into action. So as I was saying, I am like, okay, Lord, from the wrestling in my head, I made, you know, I made that free will by myself, like that choice by myself to take two sips. So I'm like, okay, okay, Lord, you're right. <laughs> I said two sips, whether I took the first sip with intention and I took the second sip unintentionally, it's two. And I said two, right? Okay. So let, let's, let's think about what would have happened if I took either of these options, like took an extra sip or 
um, took, like, took it all in. One thing I would like to point our attention to is the fact that I wouldn't have died. I wasn't doing anything bad. There was nothing wrong with having a, a, an, a hot chocolate drink and gulping it all down. Well, there's great wrong with that. But technically, it was my drink. I hadn't stolen anybody's drink, right? If I took another sip, it was my word at first. Ethically, there's still nothing wrong with taking another sip of my drink, right? But of course, I wasn't honoring my word. Okay. I would have drank it all and probably been stressed out with carrying my bags, spilled drinks on my jacket. I don't know, but I would have still made it to the train. I would have gotten to the train if I had taken all the gulp in ahead of time. I would have had to find bathrooms and restrooms in the, in, on the train when I have luggages. Absolutely not needed for my journey. But guess what? I won't have died. But I hope this is opening your heart and your mind to the things we tell ourselves. Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday, like, we can bear fruit anywhere. We're children of God. God's protection wouldn't leave me because I'm not where I'm supposed to be. No. But will I be under the covering that I need for that season and for that time? Like, I would find a bathroom. But is, am I, am I, do I need that? Do I need to start looking for a bathroom when I have four luggages? <laughs> Do I need to have an extra cup when I have, you know what I'm saying? So I'm saying it's not always that it's between the good and the bad. It's like, this is good, but do you need it for your next season? So my question now that I want you to write down is that in my life right now, how often am I holding on to unnecessary things that, that has been good and was a gift from God? And it's keeping me from actually envisioning my next move, what I'm supposed to do next, where I'm supposed to go next. Now, even in going further to that story, I actually got that drink as a gift in the sense that I had gone to Starbucks earlier and they were like doing like a buy one, get one free, right? So that was my free drink. But not just that it was my free drink, it was like a small cup, right? And I had been asking the Lord, God, I'm about to, you know, I'm fasting. So I need like a whole pamper, make sure I have a hot drink with me, it's cold. So I literally was whispering in myself, like, I want, I wish I could tell them to upgrade the drink to a bigger one and I won't have to pay for it. The lady gave me the drink and I had taken two sips or three sips before I realized that it was a bigger cup. So she had upgraded me without telling me even, right? So that was a gift. That was obviously the Lord. But now that same, the Lord that gave me the gift is like, Hey, you're not going to need this anymore. I've, I've held onto it for three hours. I didn't finish it. So now you're not going to need this dream for your next this drink for the next thing that I'm doing or for the next thing that you need to do, not even necessarily to serve me, for you. And I'm seeing myself process the attachment. I'm seeing myself process fear of lack. I'm seeing myself process, uh, but this, but that. Like, so a lot of things are coming out here, right? Okay. So welcome to my message for today. I, I hope I've been able to set a scenario that feels like an everyday example that feels easy to relate with about just little things that we are, we are some of us right now, there's like five different things on your desk and there's just one of them that is, you actually don't need anymore, but you're holding on to it because of so many things that we're going to touch on today. Welcome to navigating the good, um, navigating your will to let go despite the good and God factor. two possibilities i would like to open your 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 heart and your mind to it is possible that it is good and it is god but it is time to shift not because what you have with you is bad or where you've been the job the relationship the season not because it's bad but it might just be time for a new season and it's time to let go because that's no longer feeding you although there's nothing wrong with it Second possibility, it is good, it is God, but God is doing a new thing and he's doing something different with you individually. And are you willing to yield to be able to partake? Are you willing to yield to be able to partake? I'm going to scroll um, down. Okay, you guys are not seeing my screen, but I'm going to remind us of the scripture, Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. It says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of the old. 
Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now shall it not spring forth? Do you not know it? With a question mark. I will even make the road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I love this scripture because a lot of a lot of us, when we hear that the Lord is doing anything, we're always like excited and jumping. But I like, I cannot say the 19 before the 18. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. It says, do, do not remember the former things. Do not consider the things of the old. It doesn't say the things of the old have become spoiled. though. It says, I am doing a new thing now. <laughs> Therefore, for you to grab this new thing, you have to leave the old. And that launches me to the word of some of us being so married to old things that the Lord is no longer doing. So that brings me to even the, the topic of some of us being married married to all things that the lord like the lord has just done this you had this job you had this um appointment you had this whatever but deep down in you you know he's staring you to a new thing <laughs> right someone says covenant with the old you know he's staring you to a new like it's like a marriage you're like you're so married to this thing god is doing or god has done that you have not opened your heart to even see that maybe he's saying i gave you this gift do you trust me enough do you trust me enough to embrace the next thing i'm about to do one of the versions in one uh, in one translation he says i am doing a new thing do you not perceive it sister brother if you're here right now i want to i want to do um kind of how do you say it? is it propel your heart do you not perceive do you know that when you're busy and when you're so like fixed on something, you actually sometimes can't perceive. Like if you're fixated on one particular smell, you sometimes cannot perceive something else that's new. I'm going to go into um, some of the wrestlers of our wheel. <laughs> this is the part that, this part, I love this part so much because yeah, some of the wrestlers of our wheel, um, I'm just gonna scroll to where that is. The little things that are wrestling with our will that we actually don't, <laughs> that makes like we, it's wrestling with our will so much. And, and just before I share that, I'm going to share a scenario. So, this is a scenario I call the scenario Sterling Drive. This happens to be a place that I used to live, what, two years ago? Yeah, two probably years, two probable years ago. So, I lived in this place for two, two, two beautiful years. I had an amazing, incredible relationship with my landlord, right? Landlady or landlord. I started to feel like I'm ready to move to a different place. I'm ready to start a new season. But I, I cannot put it into words because I've made amazing friends. The house is great. I could do whatever I want, whatever pleases, please, please at me or please me. I'm trying to give you guys King James version here. I could do whatever was pleasing. I could do anything that I want. But I'm trying to like, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like this is so good. But because I know that this is so good and I'm so buried into how good this is, I'm not directly like catching the fact that it's time to move. But I know that I'm open. So I saw myself applying to jobs everywhere, like everywhere around, like everywhere outside the States, whatever. But the idea of leaving that place that I was was not like the first thing on my mind, right? So one day the Lord tells me, I need you to go into go to your landlord and talk to her about the fact that you will be leaving soon because you are looking for a job and it's just time for a shift sister brother friend if you're listening to me i went to this woman and i was like hey let's have a meeting just so you know i'm looking for jobs and i i'm trying to look for jobs all over the united states so you know i'm probably going to move if i find something blah blah and she's like oh wow where where are you looking for a job blah 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 the Holy Spirit said, this was on the 14th of June. The Holy Spirit said, I need you to tell her that you are leaving on the 30th of June. <laughs> I went into that room and I was just like talking about the fact that there's possibility that in some months or years, one day, I'm going to be finding a job somewhere and I'm going to move. First of all, that was disobedience because what I heard was to say that I'm moving on the 30th. Okay, guys, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit told me to say that, but he didn't tell me that he would have a job for me by the 29th, which didn't happen, by the way. Anyway, he didn't tell me that there would be a job for me on the 29th. He didn't tell me, he didn't give me any cushion to hold 
to make me be able to say with my full chest that let um thank you so much i love you nothing has happened this is an amazing relationship i call her my mom she calls me her daughter so i'm leaving do you know what i'm saying so there was nothing for me to be able to be like this nothing bad had happened at this point nothing so that's why when the holy spirit said go tell this person that you're leaving i'm like ah if i tell them i'm leaving what if i'm not leaving you know all those kind of things and i'm like but actually the main thing that was sponsoring my my posture was fear of like first of all i don't want her to feel bad fear of rejecting the person a lot of things that god wasn't saying and i'm going to read some of them there was this anxiety like oh lord like oh i <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it feels like to go communicate something. I'm not sure. Right. So the Lord had not given me like direct cushion saying, this is a word of the Lord. You are going to find so, 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 you know what I'm saying? So I tell her, I, I did, I did obey, but guess what? I did edited obedience. I was like, Hey, so just letting you know, I'm looking for a job. So one day I'm going to leave one day when the Lord had given me a date. So moving on, I'll, I'll come back to what happened from my disobedience. I'll come back to that later, but I want to use this to open up segment here, which is called wrestlers of your will. One of it is separation anxiety. Did you know that with things, with people, with places, you can actually have separation anxiety where you struggle with false attachments, unholy attachments. I, I want you guys to write that down. Separation anxiety, false attachments, unholy attachment with people, with things or places or experiences that you are successful to, that, that you are, uh, no, um, sorry, that you struggle with false attachment, unholy attachment with things, with people, places or experiences. When you have false attachment, you are successful to separation anxiety. Sometimes you can be codependent with, um, with comfort of a place, of a person, a person, a job, like the, the convenience. Sometimes you might be codependent with convenience so much that your, your separation anxiety from that convenience could be the one leading the way that you can't even glimpse or perceive the new thing that's about to happen. So I wrote here, this will cause you to make up reasons why you shouldn't let go. And after a while, you start to make up ungodly reasons. Like just little thoughts that are not true. And then you start to find evidence. One of my fathers of faith said, if you, if you look for evidence, you will find it. So if a thought comes to your head and you want to look for evidence to partner that thought, you will find it. If you look for evidence that everybody is fat, so you don't need to work on your weight. Every time you go to the grocery store, you are going to find fat people. And then it will affirm your point. If you tell yourself that, you need to start working out because everyone is not healthy to be fat and everyone is slim. You are going to go to the grocery store and find slim people. You would always find evidence for the thoughts that you're producing. The second thing I'm going to talk about is anxiety of any kind. These are the things that stop you from even imagine, imagining that you need to let go. Anxiety of any kind. We all know what anxiety is, I hope, I pray. But anxiety opens on ungodly doors ungodly thoughts, ungodly accusations that leads to false projection on something that's not happening. To get through it, I'm going to talk about the fear of separation. We all know what fear is. So here I have so many lists of fears now, so I hope you're writing. Fear of rejection, fear of separation, fear of lack. <laughs> this will cause you from the, the even embracing the idea of this is good, let me drop it. And it, it's easy to say it may be good, it may not be God. Uh, that has ministered to me so many times in my life, especially in the place of men. I hope that some of us here, whether you're married or you're single, you've been in a place of dating at some point. You know that this person is good, but as a spiritual person, you just know that you're not spiritually compatible. But now it's like, it's, it's good and it's God. And you're probably spiritually compatible with this thing we're talking about. But you were spiritually compatible. There has been a shift that you have unconsciously missed because you have now, like you've held on so much to the pleasure that you're getting from there, the attention, the thoughts, the convenience, the comfort. 
these are wrestlers of our will fear of rejection which i could go into and talk about for god knows how long fear of separation the fear of lack if you're here i hope you know that the fear of lack is sponsored by an orphan spirit some people have their dad they have their mom but they they literally still live as an orphan the the ability to live in full identity is actually knowing that you are no longer an orphan and you identify with god god is your dad god is your mom even though you have your real parents and let me tell you one thing is of often mentality is not a respecter of person you could be rich the richest person in this world and you will still have an orphan mentality <laughs> you could be the poorest person you still is not a respecter of person or class it says poverty mindset poverty mindset is and that was the sponsor of me thinking let me drink up all this drink because what if i don't have money to buy another one it could be more expensive on the train blah 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 <laughs> poverty mindset because something poverty mindset um it's like it's it's, it's something the spirit that sponsors it tells you that there's a hole in the provision of god or there's a there's a yeah there's a there's a stain in the in god's ability to provide so poverty mindset will tell you like you need to be greedy or you need to like shift to lack you either move to greed or move to lack you're just like you're going to lack you're going to lack so the fear of lack will keep you from actually opening your mind to the possibility of stepping to something bigger I also want to draw our attention to even the fact that the good, good and great, <laughs> good and great is all, there's always a line between good and great. But sometimes to get to great, we have to be willing. And I'm not going to say we have to leave the good. No, it's sometimes it's a willingness because the willingness is what makes you perceive. The willingness is what makes your spirit alert and ready to perceive that there's a new thing that's about to happen. Hi, please stay connected by subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss it. Another thing I wrote here is trust issues. Some of us are still in a place where, honestly, when you talk about trust, I could have a whole topic about trust, trust in the Lord, because it's a journey. I, I could literally move this mountain of trust today. Tomorrow is another trust. Trust in the Lord in finding your spouse is the one thing. Trust in the Lord in raising your children is a completely different thing. Trust in the Lord in your finances, in your career is a completely different thing. So trust is a very wide spectrum of, 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 um, of just another dimension of part of the things that we grow in the Lord, right? But one of the things that stops us from, that, that helps us, that keeps us wrestling with our will to let go is trust. Because for example, I, like I just gave a perfect ex example with, with Sterling Drive. I had no idea what was coming after. I could sense that mm, I think I want to move. I think I want to find a job somewhere else. I could sense the tiredness. But my 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 ma my marriage to the pleasure of being in a comfortable place it was bigger. So now I will tell you I could sense, but I could not necessarily. Um, now I will tell you I could sense, but I could not necessarily be like hey i'm descending that i need to move i'm moving but i could sense you know i could i could sense but the the like i don't know how to explain it i'm a math girl so almost like i could 20 percent sense like maybe i'm getting tired of this place but 80 percent, i'm so in love with the comfort the friends everything i've built here it's not making me really fully sense do you understand it's not helping me fully sense that oh hi there's a shift and then in the place of trust, I can't tell you how much I've grown in place of trust two years ago and now, right? For me, it was like, oh, but I'm going to go and tell somebody I'm moving. I've not found a place. I don't have the money. I need to find the job. I need to blah, blah, blah. So, so am I now saying that the Lord didn't know what he was saying? So I edited it to my own way. Trust issues. I also had no vision, no vision for the next steps. So when you have vision for the next, like, it, I think these are the three steps. You perceive, then you know. That scripture we just said, don't you know it? You perceive, then you know. Then when you know, you can have clear vision. And then that clear vision helps you, like, the clear vision directs your steps. Um, 
I think fast forward, I, I said, I promised to say what then happened when I didn't. So I left and I, as soon as I got into my room, I knew that I had disobeyed. I knew that that was, I, I knew, I felt it in my heart. The Holy Spirit was just like, that's not what I sent you. <laughs> Did I go back and say, hey, I need to obey the Lord. This is what the Lord said. No, I didn't. So guess what happened? I stayed in that good until the good shifted so much that I became uncomfortable. I stayed in that good until that good was now no more good. In the sense that I became uncomfortable. See, there's some times where the Lord will give you free will. And I'm sure he does. Almost all, maybe 99 points, whatever time. But I, I do know one thing about the God that I serve is that sometimes any, he will do anything to get me to where I'm supposed to be. So all that goodwill time, free will time, it's my, it's my, how do you say it? that? It's my practice time. If I like, I can get it on. But the Lord will do every single thing to get you into his will, right? So it's like, well, I told you to tell this person and be powerful. You didn't. Then I watched that relationship turn sour for no reason. No reason at all. Just nitpicking, all kinds of things. Then I, I had to leave. When I could have left powerfully and been like, hey, this is what the Lord said. I love you. Let's hug each other. Because you have to acknowledge that it's hard. You have to acknowledge that it's sad. So this is not saying to skip all of that process. But the minute you are like, when, when, when do we get so sensitive in the spirit that we just know what the Lord is doing so much that we can immediately see what he's doing, but immediately comfort ourselves, immediately acknowledge our pain, the sadness of like, oh, I love this so much. I cherish this so much, but I have to go. I feel like walking in, walking those steps is, is much easier than when you've now been thrown out of that good thing. And then and one of the things here, I said, the effects of, of not taking courage at the right time to let go. One of the things I wrote here is the brewing of resentment. You start to brew, brew resentment. Because what then happened is like, the person changed towards me. This, uh, this yeah, this woman had changed towards me. And I knew she loved me so much. Like I lived there for two whole years, right? She changed towards me. And then I started to brew, we started to brew resentment for, from, for one another. And one of the things I that one of the things I I found while I was preparing for this is that resentment would cause you to plant a seed, then grow a tree that produces shame and embarrassment that you don't need. When you could have gone, if your spirit senses were, if if you let your physical like align with the, your spiritual senses, the minute you sensed it, so that you can make a powerful decision. Another thing I wrote here is dented relationships. You end up with dented relationships, dented name. Because this job you are sensing is time to go. But because you are married to the, the money they pay, you're married to the, the comfort, the idea, the idea of having the job, even though God is pulling you to what? Maybe business, pulling you to ministry, pulling you to traveling. I don't know, you know. But, but because of that, you're, you stay and then you get to a point where your name is now stained for a little bit. Of course, the Lord redeems, right? So I just want you to know the Lord redeems. Um, but are you waiting to be to when things are redeemed? Or do you want to make a powerful decision? That's why I, on, on my note here, I was like, this is, this is not milk. This is meat. So it's only if you're, you feel strong enough to eat meat. <laughs> because it's like, I do want to wait to when circumstance force you to leave. To when circumstance force you to make a move. Or do you want to make a powerful decision? Also, let's, let's talk about this. Like, as a child of God, when you're raising children, real children now, I mean, we're still real children to the Lord, but you know what I mean, physical children. There's just a, a level that I want to raise my daughter or my son to be where, like, the moment they sense what I'm feeling, they do it. It's only a child that I'm still breastfeeding that I, you know, they can't pick up anything. They can sense that I'm upset. What's their business? They'll cry for milk and I'll give them milk. So I'm saying like, if we're trying to get on the upward journey with the Lord, when are we going to get to a point where you sense something, you pray into it, and then you make a move? I'm going to move on to the um, road to freedom now. I feel like I've set the whole table. And if, if you're here and this table feels like it's shaking for you, I'm so sorry. I love you. I pray that at the end of this, that you actually walk in your road to freedom. Before I read, before I read that, I'm gonna read um, Luke. I'm gonna read another scripture and then talk about like even just next steps. And um, because what I do want you to leave here with is the freedom, the freedom, um, the freedom of being on the other side, being on the other side of 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 truth of truth. Okay, so I'm gonna read Luke five, Luke five, verse one to four. 
one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, who we know as Pete, Simon Peter, and asked him to put out a little, and asked him to put out a little from shore, right? Then he sat down and thought the people from the boat. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, I just want you to remember the fact that Peter was doing, he was washing the net though. He wasn't part of people. It was, he was probably listening. I don't know. I wasn't there. He was probably listening to what Jesus was saying, but he was not in the crowd. He was washing his nets. Okay. Um, he said to Simon, put on, put out. Yeah. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, this is the thank you. You know, when, when you give, uh, anyway, let me not get too excited. He said to Simon, put out into the deep water, let down the net for a catch. Simon said, master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the net. <laughs> when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and they filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Hey, yeah. <laughs> when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord. <laughs> I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. I don't want to add to the Bible, but I think that what this is saying is that he had never caught that kind of fish in his life before. But, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore. They left everything. Hey! hey, hey. They left everything and followed him. I was reading this last night and I'm saying, what other example of good and God, but still letting go, are we looking for here? So there, there are many things to this right now. This was all the way good, right, for Peter. They said, we tried to catch and we've not caught anything all day. Now, God, Jesus helped. Or at the time, I'm sure they were like, master, because, you know, they didn't know about salvation at the time, but they knew Jesus, right? So master, master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. Then he catches the biggest fish that he has probably caught in his life because he says it starts to sink on two boats. The same scenario, he says they left everything and let go. Please, was it God? That was God in human form and in every form, right? Was it good? But did they have to let go? So how is that in some of us right now? We think that because God gave us a gift, God opened that door of the job, God connected you and this person, God this, God that, that it means that it's permanent. This is a very clear, this one, me, I'm talking about a process of like a year or, or a, a month. This is, this, there's no pause here. They left everything and followed him. My question would be, so who came to pack that fish? They left everything and followed him. Let's even assume they still packed some fish with them and they took it home. We all know that, that uh, Peter became Jesus' disciple from that day. I think for me, it's like he literally just showed him an opportunity. Because if it was, let's be honest, some of us that, were, that are married to something good right now, you would go and map the same way the Lord cast the net and say forever, this is how I'll be catching this net because God has, and let's be honest, Jesus, it was Jesus, right? So he blessed it. I'm sure every time they went back to that same spot, there was fish. Maybe till today, people go to that same spot and they're fish because we're talking about Jesus here. 
So that could have been a, a triple career for 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 Peter, which would have been good. But but the Lord was like, okay, now follow me. Let me show you what you can do for yourself. You are smart. You're a smart boy. Let me show you that I know the skills you have. But what is even better is to follow me. We know that the, the, the disciples did not have like a rosy, the rosiest life. They had the best things. That's why we're still talking about them today. That yes resulted in talking about him today, 2,000 plus years ago. But was it rosy? We've, we've read the Bible. We know what they went through. So it may be good, it may be God, but letting go involves pain sometimes because truly there might be things to mourn, there might be things to grief, there might be pain in the process. But it's now a matter of, do you trust the person calling you to the other side? For you to leave that much fish and follow the person and be like, okay, I leave everything. You have to have a deep sense of revelation and intimacy and trust of which you know they probably didn't know jesus much then so trust of even by faith right so we let go by faith i think that's the key word here we let go by faith here are the little steps i wrote down for road to freedom it says communicate or over communicate in safe spaces here is what i'm feeling i'm feeling this i am feeling this not pointing fingers i am feeling this I am grieving what this used to be like. And in, and I think I'm talking about the situations where we've allowed, so Road to Freedom now, I'm talking about the situations where we've already allowed that good to start getting not too good because we didn't leave when we were meant to or we didn't let go when we were meant to. Communicate or overcome, communicate in safe spaces. I'm feeling, I'm grieving that, I'm grieving what this used to be like. Allow light to be spoken into it. Allow light to be spoken into you. Don't leave room for assumptions. Ask questions. The moment you start to feel, ask questions. One of the things I wrote here is take a step back. Why am I suddenly irritable here? Why am I feeling something that is not too pleasant here? How can we get so spiritually aware So to make sure you can hear me hear me well yeah how can we get so spiritually aware that we can pick these things from miles afar without missing any sign and without waiting till the doors that were good become slammed in our faces another thing here is don't leave room for assumptions ask questions block lies like the lies in your head that is either trying to make you feel comfortable where you know you're starting to feel discomfort because it was good. Block lies. Repent of your marriage or obsession to the old. Somebody said covenant with the old. Repent of your covenant with the old. The only covenant we should have is the Lord. And that's why I feel like even the, the closer you get to the relationship with the Lord, it feels like he wants us to love as if we're almost like winded. Like you can release at any time. Love tightly, hold loosely, whatever it is, because it's a gift. And, and the truth about gift is it's a gift. And, and I feel like Peter just gave the best example. He was like, I've been here all day, I'd not catch anything. So why should I now be so, and greed will make you so attached to a gift that you do not even give yourself. Before we, and that's the same, you know, that was Peter and Jesus catching the fish. But some of us, it's our skill. It's our achievement. It's our all these things that without the without what without without God, you probably won't have been able to achieve it. But now he's saying release it, but now it's too hard. It's become your thing. Remember what I said to myself was, but this is my drink. I bought it with my money. Hmm. Beans. Okay. Um what was the other thing? Yeah, acknowledge the possibility of sadness and process feelings with healthy family, healthy community. I'm, I'm glad that almost everywhere in the world now, like getting mental therapy, mental counseling is now a thing. Speak to somebody, hopefully keep it within the Christian community that can speak life into you. Speak to somebody, speak about it, process your feeling. And most importantly, process it with the Lord. I think yesterday I was just in a process and I was like, wait, God, why am I suddenly irritable? This used to be good. This used to be fun. What's going on? 
And then the Lord started to speak to me about, okay, hold, pause. Two things here. God, am I feeling like this because this is no longer feeding me? And I feel like some of us should write those questions down. Am I feeling like this because this is no longer feeding me? Or am I feeling like this because I'm so attached to the old and I've not picked up what you're doing in the new? Or I'm, I'm unwilling to, you know, enter into what you're doing in the new. I want you to pause and sit up wherever you are and ask the Lord. You know that good thing that was once good, that is now starting to feel like it's, you know, it's starting to feel rough. It's starting to feel like you are no longer getting the same pleasure you used to get. Or maybe you're here, you are so attached to that thing that you don't even realize that you are not getting the same pleasure you used to get. Because the thought of leaving that thing, the separation anxiety is bigger is bigger than the possible achievement on the other side i pray for you right now that you get loose and that there's a one click and your eyes open in the name of jesus and now my thing is if you're here but you can spot that one thing that thing that person that relationship that job that offer that contract that you know that huh, i'm feeling a little bit you know there's just something here that is not feeling like 100 percent as it should be that you would ask the lord right now lord on this situation on this thing with this person what are you currently doing I know the Lord will meet you where you're at. Some of you, the Lord communicates with you with signs. Some of you, the Lord communicates with you with answers. The Lord will meet you where you're at. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Lord, I pray for everyone here right now that they will just be able to make space for the new that you're doing in the name of Jesus. They will just automatically, easily be able to make space for the new that you're doing in the name of Jesus. Like an instant, instantly be able to make space in the name of Jesus. Instantly be able to make space. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we just repent. We just, we really repent. I repent. I repent of greed. I repent of like lack of foresight, lack of vision for where you're taking me to that makes me feel like let me just be let me just hold hold the thing that I, that I'm experiencing now so god if there's somebody here that you know this wrestle is between them and their calling is between this good thing and their calling is between this good thing and their assignment that you will make their path straight but I, I, more than anything, I pray for an increase in a tingling that even right now, there's something tingling on the inside of you. And you know, as clear as day, what it is you need to drop. As clear as day, what it is that you need to drop. That you will just know what it is you need to drop. You will know what it is you need to drop. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, I just release boldness and courage. 
boldness and courage. And that even as these people build trust with you, that it's built on, it's built on a rock, not one that could always like it's built on a rock such that they can always go back to it because it's history. They can always go back to it. They can always go back to it. They can always go back to it in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I just keep hearing calling, calling, calling. So there's somebody here right now. This wrestle is between you and your calling. This wrestle is between you and your calling, but the you are so you're 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 so into that old pattern that it's hard for you to envision the possibility. You know, you do know it's you, but your the thought of thinking about the possibility of dropping this pattern, like dropping where you are now for something you don't understand feels absolutely impossible. So God, I pray for a vision, clear vision in the name of Jesus. Honestly, I cannot I cannot promise to pray for the Lord to show you the beginning to the end because it doesn't it doesn't really operate like that. <laughs> Ask me. <laughs> but I pray that he will show you at least day by day, day by day. And that you would know that you would not be left alone. I just want to remind you the Lord does not he does not leave us wanting. So I just want to remind you and put courage into you right now that the Lord will not leave you wanting. You will not be left wanting. You will not be left wanting. Yeah. And you will never be without. You are not an orphan. And I'm talking about spiritually. Jesus left the good of being here and doing amazing assignments and doing his father's work for the greater good so that we can receive salvation and eternal life today. Sometimes that greater good you're, you're going for, and we all know how rough that was. Um, so the greater good you're going for, the path to it might not feel easier, but it's always greater than what you think you're living. I just pray for blockages in your mind that, that's building false excuses and reasonings in your head that is not the Lord. And that every excuse you're making will be from the word, not excuse, but every you know, explanation that you're making to yourself will be from the word, that the word of the Lord will come alive to you and it will be clear what the Lord is asking of you in this season. So, guys, thank you for listening to Navigating Your Will to Let Go, even though it may be God. I'm so, so grateful that you listened to this today. So if this has um, spoken to you in any way, Please uh, comment, share, send to somebody that you feel needs this. Um, this is a word in season. One of my sisters of faith that I love so much said to me recently, she was like, this is a word in season. Most people are in the Lord. They do know the Lord, but they are struggling with what is, you know, they are struggling with what to let go because it feels like there's competing parties. But one thing I will tell you today is that whether, whether you... Whether you believe it or not, you think it's you are picking between good and good, but until you are ready to let go before you now realize that that was actually not so good. The Lord is trying to shift you into great, greater things, but you're still holding on to the good. So I hope this blesses you. Feel free to leave a comment, um, share with your friends, and absolutely subscribe to this channel, this website. My website is Um, where we do regular events on Instagram, Follow us on all social platforms. There's TikTok, Instagram, and it's all RTF with Remy. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you. Um, if you have any questions, send an email to remy30flow.com. If you watch this and you have a testimony, send send your testimonies to remy30flow at gmail.com here on the screen so that you can easily type that out. remy30flow at gmail.com. May the Lord bless you.